uh, and honestly, the worse it got, the more productive I got. Precisely, uh, that's exactly me. Yeah. Yeah, um, and I, uh, you, you put it so so gently. I, whereas I would explain it to people as um, a protest against. So whenever things got worse, I hunkered down, and that's as soon exactly. as New York locked down, I was, I peaked pro at my productivity and. Yeah. It it really for me was a protest, but I also think you hit on, you hit on it a, a little more. It's a little more accessible the way you hit on it, where um, it's about finding some semblance of control in a world you have no control over whatsoever. Exactly, and I, I have the added uh, concern of a of a, a nine year old daughter. She's going to be ten pretty soon. I think you um, know how much I love my daughter and talk about her all the time. But but I also have this. Um, having now a kid my mortality is nailed to me i mean i mean every single moment matters in a way that i never would i never really understood before and that's me some people have different everyone has a different experience with this world of having kids and and marriage and whatever um but for me it's been uh i guess a bracing experience because i'm so i feel very lucky and i'm so happy to have this kid um and i want to i want to have something to show her you know uh she's written a 180 page novel she's nine and she's working on another one it's 30 pages and it's the funniest thing i'll be up in the morning and she'll come downstairs and you know i'm st i'm typing away and she'll come down and she'll like i'm gonna work on my novel and she'll sit down and she's actually an excellent typist you know <laughs> She doesn't have typos. She she she's all over the place. And I look at her and she's like going and she's typing and she's literally writing these, and and it is wish fulfillment again. It's this idea of she's been in lockdown, she's had a terrible time of it, and so she's writing stories about traveling to Paris and and London and adventures, and it's just really it's just really good. So, part of my desperation too in these mornings when I'm writing is, what, where is my legacy? You know, what am I gonna have for her? And I'm, it's not going to be money. I wish, I wish that were the case, but it's not going to be, you know, but what can I do that might make her proud of me uh, yeah. and, and, and not forget me? You know, I was in a rock band when I was in my twenties and the whole time, and I was, and I was, that was fun, you know, and I, and I look back on it now, I, I hated it at the time because it was a lot of traveling and I, it was nice people. I like, I loved the people I was with, but it was just a very strangely rigorous life that wasn't for me. Um, but my daughter now listens to those records and she can sing along with the songs. And I remember driving her to school, uh, like a year ago. And this band I was in was called fuzz. One of the bands was called fuzzy and it has two female vocalists who also played guitar and bass and, uh, and then two guys in the rhythm section, bass and drums. And, uh, the songs are really great, great pop, you know, and my daughter was singing along with my friend uh, Chris Toppin, who's one of the one of the women who sings in the band. And I realized 30 years have passed, and the only reason I was in that band was for this moment in the car. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was like, oh my fucking god! Like this is why I wanted to be a drummer, and I could have never known that back then. So, yeah. <laughs> so I feel this this richness in life that. Um, it's funny. I, I discovered it so late and, and it, it, everything feels so short and uh, temporary now. And so 400 page novel, I can't wait to get working on the next one because I want to have this thing together. I want to hear her singing. I want to, I want to know that someday she's going to read these, you know? Yeah. I, I know that feeling really, really well. And I just, as a curiosity, has she found you in any music videos yet? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'll talk <laughs> There's there's one there's one with me in the Tonight Show and she she uh, it's really funny because I'm wearing these enormous um, really tight orange bell bottoms corduroy <laughs> bell bottoms and a satin shirt and you know I just look really it's 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 awesome like it's it's just it's pretty, it's, I was at an age where you could get away with anything you know um, and there there are other videos that she likes she at her school in art class they let them play music and she'll put on stuff that we listen to at home and sometimes she'll put on um, fuzzy or the lemon heads or whatever. But I, you know, I, 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 for all, for all the, the reasons I thought I was playing back then, I never would have imagined that someday I'd be looking back on it all this way, you know? Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, um, 
one of the projects I did over the pandemic is I dug up all of my old stuff from way back when I was still a teenager. Yeah. And it just kind of hit me. The purpose of all that was just to do it and archive it and only find it again when I knew better, when I knew that that wasn't, that wasn't what it was. And I don't know. It's just like, there's this weird thing where you realize the purpose of something years after. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That, that, that kind of discovery is, it's, it's, it's so validates how uncertain our lives are at any given moment. It's, it's like a positive version of that uncertainty. It's like a positive reinforcement of just the magic of chance in our lives. When you find something that isn't chance, you by chance find something that you had done and see that there is a law of chance to even that rediscovery. It's, it's uh, yeah. I totally, yeah, that feeling is amazing. That's good. That's, I like where this episode went. Um, good. <laughs> would you, do you have like a, a, a bio headshot you could send me? Yeah, I do. I, I, it's, it's kind of dark. It looks, it looks really um, kind of goofy and dark, but it, but it's, it's, uh, I do. Yes, I can absolutely email right, you. Cool. Um, and uh, I just use it as a bumper so people will click. Um, well, they may, they may look at it and, and flee. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> uh, it, it looks better than my logo, which is the other option, um, which is just me kind of in a purple haze. But um, no, well, I thought this. Decide, you know. Yeah, yeah. You can decide if it's better. <laughs> I think people click on it. You had a right. you had a really huge, almost cult like following on campus. So you'll have people looking looking to hear you talk again. I think that's great. Yeah, and and you know it's funny because uh, Sarah Lawrence, I'm you know I'm guest faculty sort of for, hopefully for life. If, if, <laughs> if you know hopefully they keep asking me back. Um, um, but it's been it's been such a surprising thing because I hadn't. I've only taught for a few years. Like I had, I did other things all my life and my friends were all getting out of an MFA program and starting to teach or getting out of an MA or PhD and teach. And that was never what I was doing. It isn't something that I, I didn't want to do. It just wasn't coming my way. And then at Sarah Lawrence, I got this really speaking of chance by chance, this gig teaching. And uh, I was like, Jesus Christ, this is amazing. Like, I love this. Uh, And, and, it's it's come back in so many different ways now um I'm, I'm actually friends with former students now where they're they're not students anymore we just sort of you know we might have a writing group or or they're texting and we text back and forth